This is KGW News at Sunrise. I saw a bullet come in and hit the top of the restaurant. There was at least five shots after that, so like six, maybe. Shots fired outside the Cheesecake Factory at the Clackamas Town Center early last night. We heard from a family who was celebrating a birthday there and wound up ducking for cover under their table. More details coming up in one of today's top local stories. And if you bought a Powerball ticket in Oregon, check that ticket because one of you may have won the $1.3 billion jackpot. Coming up in our top story this morning, our Devin Haskins will give you a run through of all the winning numbers. Johnson, the pull up, no rebound, snare, Cardoso, unstoppable. <laughs> South Carolina wraps up an undefeated season and Iowa's Caitlin Clark ends an incredible college career. A recap of the Women's College Basketball Championship coming up here in just a few minutes. Wow, what a moment. Hey, glad you're here on this Monday. Rod, what were you up to this weekend? Were you, you were watching that whole thing, uh, right? Yeah, I watched, uh, of course, I'm, you know, I talk a lot about, about uh, Missouri. I was actually mm -hmm. born in Iowa, so I was uh, rooting on the Iowa Hawkeyes big time. Uh, great season, but South Carolina, just a beast of a team. Yes. And holy cow. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic finish. Feet. Yeah. Here's a look at uh, the satellite picture. Of course, one of the top stories today, the for us, a partial solar eclipse. Of course, you need some parting of the clouds to be able to look up and see it, right? And right now, we have solid overcast conditions being reported up and down the western parts of Washington, Oregon. We actually have rain along uh, the uh, Washington coast, a little bit of rain uh, showing up on radar up around Astoria. We we are at 46 degrees and unfortunately for Portland, Vancouver and even down in the Salem, odds favor us staying overcast all day. So if that's the case, at best we'd see some filtered uh, viewing of the partial eclipse of the cloud deck thins a little bit, but we're not really expecting that. I have today's high at 58 degrees. Here's Chris. That's well, kind of a bummer, but uh, you know, at least it's not cold, right? All right, let's take you through North Portland. I-5, there's your southbound drive up near Victory Boulevard. We're rolling right along there. We're rolling right along on the west side of the Sylvan Hill and switching gears real quick out to Gresham. This is Interstate 84 near 181st. That looks pretty good. Again, a heads up for uh, TriMet riders of the Blue Line. The Blue Line disruption continues today and all week. Uh, TriMet's doing some track work on the east end of the Blue Line, so they're using shuttle buses to serve stations between 172nd and Civic Drive. That'll be through the day on Saturday. Drew? All right, Chris, thanks for that update this morning. 1.3 billion dollars. <laughs> 1.3 billion. Oh. That is how much the winning Powerball ticket is worth. A ticket we know was sold somewhere in Portland. Yeah, and we do know that it was sold somewhere in Northeast Portland. That's where Devin Haskins is live for us this morning with a look at what the winner will walk away with, Devin. Oh man, one lucky winner here in Portland, or maybe not even from Portland. We don't know who that winner is because they haven't come forward in the store, store that they bought it from. We don't even know that either. All we know that it was in Northeast Portland and in 97218 area code, which is where I'm at right now. Storefronts looking a little different this morning. It used to say 1.3 billion, now saying just $20 million. It could be a while until we find out who the winner is and what store that is, is because they have a year to claim their prize. This is the biggest jackpot ever won in Oregon and the fourth largest Powerball jackpot ever won. The amount, $1.368 billion. That's billion with a B. Whoever the lucky winner is has some big decisions to make. Do they take the lump sum payment of $621 million or let that money grow and take the 30 years of annual payouts? Whoever it is, according to the state law, with few exceptions, the winner cannot stay anonymous. If you are holding on to a ticket, you want to check your numbers. Uh, we encourage people to sign the back of the ticket if it is a winning ticket, because um, it's just like holding a piece of money at that point. So it's really important to do that. Um, and also would recommend you connect with a financial advisor uh, to get some advice um, if you have a ticket worth this amount of money before you claim your prize. Oregon's had a few big Powerball winners in the past. In 2005, a $340 million jackpot was won before Sunday's drawing. That was the largest ever in the state. And the most recent one was in 2018 when a Salem man won $150 million. Now, there aren't that many stores that sell the Powerball ticket here in the 97218 area code. In the Coley neighborhood, again, that includes the airport uh, up in this area. There's only 10, so 
kind of narrows down that field of whoever it is, but whoever it is, whatever store that is, they also get a payout uh, for selling that winning ticket. So kind of waiting on bated breath to find out who won it and hmm. which store sold it. Back to you guys. The fact that we're all here this morning, Devin suggests none of us <laughs> have that winning ticket. Thanks for that update this morning. Right now we want to get to some other headlines that we're following on this Monday, starting with a shooting last night outside the Cheesecake Factory at the Clackamas Town Center. We spoke to a family who says they were having a birthday dinner there when they saw a bullet come through the building and hit the ceiling of the restaurant. This all happened just before six o'clock last night. Police say multiple shots were fired near the restaurant outside the mall there. The investigation continues this morning. So far, there's no details on a suspect or suspects. If you have any information about what happened, you can contact the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office tip line. That number on the screen is 503-723-4949. Meanwhile, veterinarians in Western Washington are warning about a deadly, highly contagious virus that's affecting dogs in the area. We're talking about parvovirus, also known simply as parvo. It's highly contagious and can cause diarrhea, vomiting, and loss of appetite. One animal hospital in the area says they have seen as many as a dozen cases of parvo in just the nine months that they've been open. One of the dogs they treated wound up dying. That's why one vet is asking the community to do more to prevent this virus from spreading. If people don't scoop their poop, I know it's law, but um, it's, it's really to help prevent the spread of any kind of diseases, um, whether it be worms, um, parvo, whatnot. If another animal smells that poop um, on a walk, then they can contract it that way. Veterinarians also say the best thing you can do to help your pet is to make sure they're vaccinated. The federal government is giving Oregon $162 million as part of a $20 billion investment in public transit and infrastructure nationwide. The investments will help with repairs and upgrades to public transit and roadways. The money is part of the congressional funding package that passed back in March. Meantime, Washington State will be getting $377 million, some of which will go to upgrading and maintaining ferry service in the Puget Sound. Perfection with a touch of sweet redemption. Undefeated South Carolina. That's right, South Carolina goes undefeated this season. They beat Iowa 87-75 to win the Women's National Basketball Championship yesterday. Huge crowd in the stands, huge crowd on TV yesterday. South Carolina becomes the 10th team in Division I college basketball history, women's history, to finish a season perfect. You carry um, the burden of, you know, every single one of your players all the coaches and staff members that put so much into our team and you know it's heavy load to be undefeated to you know finish the job and it, you, you get emotional this game also marked the end for Caitlin Clark, the Iowa star, saw her college career come to a close the leading scorer in men's and women's college basketball history she didn't finish number one in terms of college basketball's championship this year, but she is expected to be the number one overall pick in the WNBA draft. Man, what an mm. exciting moment. So we'd like to start a new <laughs> tradition here. You sounded very quiet about that exciting well, I, moment. I, I, <laughs> I, I think we should start every weathercast now talking about the Cully Northeastern Northeast Portland forecast. Oh my gosh, are you going, going back, back to the Powerball? He's yeah, going back one, to the Powerball. Yeah, one, two, three, four, yeah, how many five stories, stories ago. ago. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm fixated with the fact that somebody out there who's sitting on a lot of money might like if we start every forecast that way. My mom called me on Sunday morning <laughs> and asked me, did you even buy a ticket? My dad texted yeah. me. Wow. He was like, did you win? No, I'm like, no, no. Mom. Dad Sorry. <laughs> Your son not. is still just <laughs> scratching some pennies together. <laughs> there you go. Uh, well, you know, the, the story today is, of course, the uh, eclipse, and our forecast is cloudy. Wouldn't you know it? Uh, so at best, we're going to see some thinning spots for maybe a filtered view between 1030 and 1230. It's basically a two-hour window that we hope to get to see a partial eclipse of the moon blocking uh, a part of the sun. All right, you see a system back here. 
It's already producing rain into western Washington. That's going to continue today. A little bit of rain up around Astoria. The clouds keep spilling in to the west side of Washington and Oregon throughout the day. Now, at most, we would see some sprinkles here in Portland or maybe a trace of moisture. But overall, we expect us to be cloudy and dry, and that's where we are right now. 46 degrees is the temperature. 42 up in Seattle. Uh, again, you find increasing rain chances the farther north you go today. And the farther south you travel down I-5, the better the bet that you'll eventually see the clouds thin out somewhere. What? Eugene 43 currently partly cloudy skies over in central Oregon. Bend is freezing at 30 and then you've got uh, the clearest part of our state down here. John Day to end of Burns uh, expected to have good viewing of the uh, partial eclipse today. Here's the way Futurecast shows it on the west side. 8 o'clock this morning, solid cloudy skies. 1030 this morning, the uh, partial eclipse time starts at 1033. Uh, and you can see we are overcast, maybe even a little bit of light rain up around Longview Astoria. We stay that way through 1230 and actually we stay that way all the way to tomorrow morning. Now tomorrow morning, there's a front that drops through us. That weather system I showed you to start doesn't bring us a lot of rain, but some scattered light shower activity. That rain chance disappears in the afternoon. We become partly cloudy and then we get into our nicest day of the week, which right now in terms of fair, sunny, warm weather, it looks to be on Wednesday. Here's a look at the wider view and again out east, Spokane down into eastern Oregon. There's your best eclipse viewing at 1030 this morning. All right, our um, forecast then for the valley. Cloudy to mostly cloudy skies, light west winds, temperatures mid to upper 50s expected. And then up in southwest Washington, don't forget there's a reasonable chance of some light rain up in Cowlitz County. This shows Longview with thicker cloud cover at only 52 degrees this afternoon. The clouds are a little bit higher in Vancouver, 58. I show Portland mainly dry, overcast 58. A little bit of light rain scattered about tomorrow morning and then becoming dry and partly cloudy in the afternoon. That would get us up into the 60s. Wednesday, sunny and 70. Overall, the seven day doesn't show the warm, dry weather lasting as long as it was looking like last week. In fact, we have showers returning as quickly as Thursday evening. And then we're right back into the cool weather for this time of the year with likely showers, maybe some hail mixed in and temperatures in the low to mid 50s into the upcoming weekend. And that is your forecast. Okay, thank you.